Hello and thank you for joining this session on HL7 Fire. I call it the swagger of healthcare because what swagger is achieving for the REST based integration in general is what this specification is also aimed at, though more specifically for healthcare. In this video, I'm trying to share my thoughts on interoperability, the challenges in making systems interoperable, how HL7 is contributing towards the same and its overall significance in enabling smart apps. A quick intro about myself. I'm an architect building solutions on Salesforce and Microsoft Dynamics. This video is a part of the article on HL7 Fire that I have authored for my blog integrate.com. So let's begin. Interoperability is a very common term that is often coined when we talk about healthcare. And so before we jump into the specifics to try and understand its significance, let us quickly visualize the definition considering a simple example that has only two participants or organizations. So suppose we have two different systems built for these organizations and suppose they are crafted on two different platforms with a different data model. For example, Java and MySQL versus .NET and Cosmos DB. The two systems would be called as interoperable if they can exchange the information with each other and interpret the same. The exchange of information can be implemented by utilizing any of the established protocols designed for integrating systems, where a platform neutral data language like XML or JSON can be used as a medium of communication. Syntactically, that doesn't pose any challenge since all the platforms today have the capability to generate XML or JSON and also consume this platform neutral data formats. Consider the patient table and say system one has column names defined something like this. We can send this information in the form of uh, XML or JSON where the column names are keys and the values are embedded as is. So here system one can generate the XML like this or a JSON like this. On the other hand, system 2 can parse this data using its inbuilt parsing libraries. The real challenge is in terms of semantics, that is interpretation of the exchanged data. The design and development of system 2 could, could be done independent of system 1 at different times by different team because ultimately they belong to different organizations. The architects and developers will have no idea if at all there will arise a need to integrate with system 1. Therefore, the structure of patient table defined by system 2 could be different from what is there with system 1. For example, as we see here, few of the column names for system 2's patient table is different from system 1. As a result, what happens is, even if we send the information over the platform neutral languages, the receiving system cannot interpret the meaning of it unless there is a pre-agreed contract that defines the mapping between each of the table columns. So this set of systems can truly be termed as interoperable only when they can communicate with minimal or without any such contracts even after they scale at a later point of time. That brings us to the next question. That is, why is interoperability so important for healthcare? In the coming slide, by going through a simple patient journey, we can see that why interoperability is a necessity for healthcare and the challenges we face when the system of participating organizations are not interoperable. Imagine a patient named John visits a hospital for a severe pain in his right hand. John meets his family doctor and takes an initial examination. The doctor wants to send John to a radiology practice to address a suspected complex fracture. The physician needs to transmit the patient's records to the radiologist and the radiologist team needs to later quickly send over the results from the imaging department. Post this, the x-ray results and other reports should be made available to the hospital for a clear picture on the patient's situation, allergies, past ailments, etc. In short, a 360 view of the patient. If John needs a surgery, then he needs admission to the surgery room. And for that, an appointment should be booked with all the required resources like doctors, nurse assistant, medical devices, equipments, etc. A lot of information exchange required. Post surgery, there will be, of course, medication prescription that needs to be passed on to the pharmacy. This brings billing systems into picture. Additionally, 
there will be insurance providers who needs access to patient and surgery information for processing the claims. After surgery, John might be assigned to a care team like physiotherapist and nutritionist for post-discharge care. This could be external to the current hospital and therefore altogether a different set of systems. Imagine how complex the integrations become when more and more systems participate in this patient journey. And systems approximately means n into n minus 1 by 2 contracts. Even a slight delay in passing and processing of information can affect the patient's health and experience significantly and at times lead to fatal results. Care delayed is care denied just like justice and is definitely not a good way of designing the healthcare systems. This must be even more evident if we look at the current pandemic as we understand the importance of timely care. So how can interoperability solve this problem? Simple, instead of having to design those many contracts between every pair of system, what if we have one single contract that defines the mapping between every possible participant of the healthcare system? Is it possible? Yes, it is. If every participant or system follows the same data model or structure, that is the same column names and value system, then we never need any mapping logic and henceforth would never need any contract. This is what exactly the body HL7 International is trying to achieve. It has produced various specification that standardizes the most commonly used entities in the form of resources. This is what we call FIRE that is fast healthcare interoperable resources. The specification not only defines the overall table structure, but also defines and standardizes the field names, the format of data interchange, and the interface to be used for integration. There are these many resources defined for every logical entity of a typical clinical workflow as part of FIRE, and many more being added with new versions. This is how a patient resource looks like that defines the various columns for patient table, its relationships with other resources, the cardinality, the codable concept, all of them. So now coming back to our previous example, we no longer need the contract if both these systems follow the HL7 fire specification. What that means is, now the variations that we had in the two tables will be eliminated because they both will be as per the structure defined by HL7 fire. As a result, whenever the systems share the data, there won't be any challenge in interpreting any of the info because the keys will now be same irrespective of the origin. For example, gender is now gender for both the system and in all the data interchange format. And therefore we can say that the specification itself becomes the contract. Apart from the interoperability, HL7 Fire helps in standardizing the client applications with the help of another framework called SMART. And what it basically does is, it allows the app developer, be it mobile or web, to kind of build a common template that can be reused for different healthcare organization and hence the name Substitutable Medical Applications and Reusable Technologies. This basically means that the same code base should be able to connect and consume data from different EHR systems. Let us try to understand this with a simple visual. Suppose we write a code that built the entire functionality and flow by assuming the incoming data in fire format and also generates the data in fire format. Additionally, by making the EHRs follow the specification, we are imposing the underlying data model also to be common. The common data model is practical and feasible because more or less all the patient have have similar functionality and workflows. As a result, once we have the base code, this acts as a template, using which we can quickly build new apps for these different EHRs that have Firebase REST APIs, with of course few little modifications in terms of theme and language. Interesting, isn't it? Again, you might want some added functionality via third-party apps. Consider a use case where a similar third-party app named Blood Pressure Monitor wants to access the patient data to provide some analytics and beautiful charts. Instead of having to create a new set of credentials and saving the information, the app can directly get it from the EHR to which the existing app is connecting by simply raising 
a consent request for the required resources. For this, it will initiate a flow like this and once it gets the access granted, the EHR will send the required resources in the form of HL7 file. The same can be processed to generate the results and shown directly with the existing app that's connected to the EHR. With this setup, the BPM app doesn't need to separately maintain the servers and collect patient info again. It can reuse the same data already available with the EHR using the same code base. Another best example to help understand smart is to think about how authorizing apps via Facebook works. If you ever happen to log into another application via Facebook, you might have come across a consent screen like the one shown here. By clicking continue or accept, what you basically tell Facebook is that hey, grant limited access to some of my information to the app so that the app can log me in and let me use it. With respect to our scenario, Facebook is the EHR. It stores all the personal information about the patient. The data format and standard which Facebook uses to store this data is the equivalent of file. This mechanism or flow that handles approving the authorization, how it should be triggered and what should happen after accepting or denying the request for consent is based on OAuth 2.0 protocol. And in the healthcare world, it is named as SMART. So lastly, Fire employs many popular modern web technologies that developers are already familiar with such as HTTPS, REST, XML, JSON, Atom and OAuth uh, like the one we have seen. Since Fire makes use of these well-known web technologies, the skills required to develop applications with Fire are directly transferable from anyone working in a website or a web development. This means that your pool of candidates is much larger and thus it is easier and less expensive to build out your team. In an effort to make data sharing easier and improve the level of interoperability in healthcare, several of the biggest electronic healthcare uh, health record vendors have agreed to participate in an initiative called the Argonaut project. As a result, there have been a number of innovative apps built with Smart on Fire, all of which are vendor neutral and can be plugged into EHRs. Having said that, the success of HL7 Fire and for that matter any standard specification really depends on the implementers, that is hospitals and EHR vendors. And therefore healthcare, which is an integration problem, can only be solved with serious participants and community effort. Therefore, if you like the video, do share across relevant channels and community forums. Here are a few links for more info on the topic and the article on the blog related to this video. You can connect with me on LinkedIn for questions or discussion on this topic. Thank you for being part of the session. See you with another interesting article. Thank you.